Hey, Cliff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jared. Uh, excited about this. I appreciate you reaching out. Awesome, man. Well, hey, you're uh, you're one of the people that I've been waiting to talk to ever since COVID hit. So I'm I'm excited to pick your brain and share your story with everybody. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, not many people say COVID was a good thing for them, but uh, for our business, it was very good. Not not good for the country and the world, but for our business, it was very good. Well, before we get into it, tell everybody who you are and, and what you do, what your business is. Yeah, so my name is Cliff Kennedy, CEO of Frios Gourmet Pops. We're a mobile, now mobile franchise system that we say we sell happiness on a stick, uh, which is gourmet popsicles of amazing flavors from blueberry cheesecake to strawberry mango to blue raspberry uh, and a bunch of other flavors. And we've got over 70 territories across the country right now. So for people who don't know what your pops are, Explain, you know, what makes them different? What makes them gourmet? Yeah, so we hand pour all of our pops. And so when we say gourmet, it's about having all those inclusions and real ingredients. So we just have four or five ingredients. It's not a science project. So when we make our key lime pie pop, let's say that that's what made me buy this company. Um, it's got real limes in there and real graham cracker in there. It's not just, hey, let's throw this food coloring in here and there's food. There's no food coloring. And so it's like your grandmother made it and froze it and put it on a stick. So that's how we call it gourmet. Very cool. So Cliff, you have a little bit different of a background. So I want to go back to the very beginning. What, what were you doing before you owned Frios? Yeah, so I've been in my family business my entire life. My grandfather started out of the trunk of his car with an eighth grade education. So that's where my entrepreneurial blood came from and my drive came from really just felt that it came from him. And then uh, I was in the oil and gas world selling safety equipment my entire life. My brothers are in it. My mom owns the business. My dad's involved in it. Uh, but it was just something innate in me that I just needed to do something to control my own destiny. Um, and so that's what getting stuck in traffic and trying a Frios will do to you. It'll uh, help you find your own destiny. Awesome. So how, how did you discover Frios? Yeah. So I would get stuck in traffic every single day going up Old Shell Road. I'm miserable, not happy. Music's not making me happy. And I would see the Frio stand there and all these kids and parents and all these people over there were just so happy and had smiles on their face. I was like, all right, let me just see if this will solve my problem. So one day I stopped, uh, tried our key lime pie pop. And I tell everyone, the the colors got more vibrant. Uh, the birds were singing. Uh, it was just unbelievable experience of what that product and that pop made me feel in that moment. Um, and so I just kept trying it and trying it and trying it. And luckily for me, the current franchisee at the time was looking for an out because she had a career change. Um, and so that's when I stepped in May 1st of 2018, I became a franchisee with Frios. And then eight months later, uh, through the next opportunity, took over as CEO of the company and moved it from North Alabama to Mobile, where we are today. And that's been about a little over four years now. So you start out as a franchisee, uh, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are either a franchisee, know a franchisee, know what a franchisee means. Um, but then you started to look at buying the company. Talk about that process. Yeah. So the franchising world's a lot different, uh, in, in regards to regular business, but we all know franchise businesses. Uh, it's almost like your life can't, uh, interact without a franchise business on a day-to-day -day basis. And so in franchising, we have a saying that says you go in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And so you as a business owner, you, there's no support infrastructure and everything else. I mean, that's you got to figure it out. But in franchising, you own your own business. But myself as the franchisor, I have a team of people that are supporting all the individual business owners through marketing support and sales strategies and financial support and all these different things that they don't have to figure out for themselves, but they can go run their own business. So we give them all the infrastructure and support. And so that's what we do on a daily basis. So, so you're looking at buying the company. Were you still full-time working in oil and gas? Yeah. So for me, this was my side hustle. Um, and I just wanted something that I can still run myself and grow something on the side that I could do. And so when I was doing that full time, I was like, this is fun. And I was learning more of it. But one of the things, and to kind of finish up your question, you just asked me, and I apologize, was we didn't have that in the franchising world with Frios. Like our conference calls were, hey, 
it's hot outside, go sell pops, good luck. Like there was no communication, there was no support or anything like that. And so for us and what I saw the opportunity is like great product, but bad infrastructure. How can I solve that? And so now that's what our team is doing. Like I just said, it's like we have all these teams of people. So our conference calls now are how do we support you through social media? How do we support you through marketing? How do we support you financially? And let's look at all your books and making sure you're running a profitable business, which wasn't there in the past. And that's where I really saw that opportunity saying, okay, now if we can compile all this together, now we can grow the company. So when I took over, we had 21 locations. Uh, and so I really believe that with our infrastructure and support now to our franchisees to set them up for success, that's what's allowed us to go to over 70 territories in four years. So when you were, when you're, you know, doing your due diligence, was everything rosy? Was it a clear, yes, this is going to work? Or were there things that you were like, you know what, I'm probably going to have to work on this to make sure that this is a success? You know, it looked rosy at the time when I was doing my due diligence, but also realized that, hey, there's going to be some issues. Like there, these franchisees are just doing whatever they want. And that's not what you're able to do in franchising. You have to follow the brand guidelines and all the structures that are part of the franchising business. So I knew there was going to be some issues along the way. Uh, and myself as a franchisee, you know, I had two brick and mortar stores at the time. And, you know, you, I always tell everyone, and this is, we'll allude to where we are now, but, you know, you can't get a thousand person office complex to come into your brick and mortar to go get a thousand free us pops. But what we realized during COVID was the fact that, hey, we got to be going to the people. We got to go to the ball fields. We got to go to the corporate locations and bring the happiness. And so during that transitionary period of like, okay, let's mobilize. And so I said, what's, what's exciting? We're a fun brand. I said, let's tie dye wrap up some bands. No one's really doing that. And so um, that's when we realized like, Hey, we're going to revolutionize the ice cream industry. Like we're not just going to be, you know, the old band that you see and slap a couple of stickers. Let's make it fun and engaging for the kids. Uh, and so that was a unique thing for us during COVID was saying, okay, we're mobilizing, we're going to the people. So now if a business complex of a thousand people call, yeah, we can do that. We're going to go to you and bring the happiness to them. So, yeah, I want to, I want to talk more about that in a minute. And you did make that transition during COVID. And I definitely want to talk about that before you started with the vans, before that, that started working out, what was your percentage? Like, how would you break down your sales with brick and mortar and you had retail distribution too, right? Yeah, a little bit at that point. It wasn't a big thing because we weren't wrapping our pops at that point. So I'd say it was, you know, 80% dependent upon the brick and mortar stores. I mean, a lot of our franchisees, all of them, quite honestly, have mobile carts so they can go to birthday parties and weddings and all different kinds of events for kids and adults. Um, so, but it was an 80, 20 at that point. Now there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, so now we're seeing some of them that are, completely flip that and have more wholesale accounts than they do events. It's all about what's right for their territory and what sets them up for success. So now you're the, you've, you bought the company. You are now the franchisor. You're, you're where you, I guess you were still the franchisee as well at this point too. Yeah, I'm, I'm still both. I still have my <laughs> territory here in Mobile. I, I, it's near and dear to my heart. So I have to keep that. Awesome. So as the franchisor and you know, you, you've been the franchisee with all these pain points leading up to this point. Now you're in control. You're on the other side of the table. What were some challenges that you faced that maybe you didn't realize as a franchisee? Yeah, I, I'd say one of the biggest flaws that I had coming in was saying, okay, I'm a single franchisee. Here are all my problems. Let me go ahead and start solving those. But what I quickly realized that was that, okay, I'm the franchise where I have a different responsibility. I had a responsibility at that point to 20 other people as well. So all the things that I thought I needed to do at that point were not all right. And so when I took a step back many months later after realizing my faults, I was saying, all right, I need to go on a listening tour. So I went and talked and I went and drove around the country and talking to all my franchisees and meeting them at their store and saying, what is your pain point? And then I brought all that back and we sat down. I was like, all right, this is the path forward. This is what they're really looking for. Um, and so then that's when we started to evolve and like come up with these systems and processes that are in the franchising world to better support our franchisees. Yeah. I mean, like I said in the beginning, there are a lot of franchisees out there. And, you know, when you talk to them, they have a lot of pain points and they think, you know, if they were on the, if they were in your shoes, they would do things differently, but they, they don't have the privilege of being in your shoes and seeing it from the franchisor's 
uh, point of view. So it's always interesting to hear from both sides and, and give you the opportunity to, to explain to people, you know, what is it like to run not just one location, but help support all of the locations? Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. And that's what we've implemented now was that not only within our internal chat groups and everything else that we have, we're getting feedback from them before we make decisions and saying, hey, instead of just saying, we're going to do this, saying, hey, let's, let's all talk about this. Is this what's right for you? Because they're on the ground every single day going to events, hearing from the consumers of, hey, here's a new flavor that we're really looking for. And so they'll put it into our, our, our group and say, hey, has anyone else got this feedback on this flavor or that? And so we really hear back from them. And that, now, especially now that we have over 54 franchisees uh, with their 70 plus territories, like that's a lot of great intel and data that we can get back from them to better ourselves as the franchisor, which then we can come up with a new process or new procedure or new flavor and then roll it out to all of our franchisees to make them more successful. So we talked about COVID a little bit. Going into COVID, you had the model of brick and mortar and some retail distribution. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you probably were toying with the mobile van idea in your local market just because you're here. How was your business affected by COVID? It was the greatest thing that ever happened to us at Free Ups. Uh, you know, what, during the pandemic, we were like, oh no, we got so many brick and mortar locations, like everything's shutting down. What do we do? But some of our franchisees were saying, we're going to mobilize. We're going to, they started pulling their carts on trailers and going around neighborhoods. And some of them already had trailers and they were pulling around neighborhoods. And once we got the images back of kids writing thank you notes and saying, thank you so much for just bringing us some happiness and kids writing in sidewalk chalk of Frio's pops and everything else, like that was our aha moment. Like we got to mobilize long-term. It's like, this is, this is it. This is the path forward. Like this was a great opportunity for people. Like uh, landlords were letting people get out of their leases much earlier than expected. And so people were starting to get out of their leases. They were starting, we were starting to find vans um tie-dye wrapping them up and like as quickly as humanly possible and in the franchising world the most important thing for us is we have what's called a franchise disclosure document that new franchisees have to read and all of ours was based off brick and mortar so usually that takes several months to rewrite in 30 days we completely wrote rewrote our business plan to be a mobile franchise and then from that four point was we're all mobile now we're no longer brick and mortar based even though we had them people were trying to get out of them as soon as possible like the path forward was being mobile and going to the people. So for us and realizing that during COVID, I mean, thank goodness. I'm hopefully we would have realized it at some point, but COVID made us realize it a lot sooner. That's great. And so um, how did the mobile franchises perform versus the, the traditional brick and mortar? Oh, it's not even a comparison. So, you know, even uh, when I had my store and I, you know, you had the high school and college kids and I'd go check on the store, you know, it's really tough to get people to come to your store if they're walking around or whatever. And I'm sitting there seeing like, this kid's just sitting there on TikTok or Instagram, like Snapchat, whatever it is, like no one's coming into the store. But now with the mobile van, you're not paying for somebody just to sit there or the big lease and insurance and all that kind of stuff or a big build out of a brick and mortar. Now, if you crank up that van, you know that van is going to make you money for the day. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Or it's the flexibility of, hey, we don't have any events today. That's fine. Let's go try to book some events. Let's make some calls today. So it's that flexibility that it allows you to have to control your own schedule and not paying for someone to sit there and just look up social media. And so I, I have to assume, you know, with, with new opportunity, there's also new challenges. What challenges did you face with the vans that maybe didn't exist with brick and mortar? <laughs> this is a great question. I love it. And we I'm still dealing with this today because during the pandemic, Jarrett, we all were, we all thought we were having trouble with paper towels and toilet paper, right? Uh, little did we know it was going to just keep trickling, trickling, trickling down. And now you saw it with the vehicles in the world. Like we're still struggling to, to get the vans that we need. Um, and so that's continued to be a problem. So beyond just them getting new vans that we might get a new van once every three or four months. I mean, we've ordered a hundred new vans with our dealership relationship, I think we've only received like 30 of them over the past two years. Um, and so there's no supply there. So our franchisees are saying, okay, can I go buy used? Okay, now we have to allow them to go buy used. And then how, what does that look like? Or is it a different model van? Um, so we've really had to adjust on the fly saying, all right, when we first started, 
COVID really hadn't sunk its teeth in yet on the supply chain of the van so we could get them when we wanted them. Now it's, it's sunk its teeth in. So we've had to really change our, our business model around that. That's incredible. I didn't even think about the, the, the vehicle issue. And uh, now that you mention it, of course, all the, all the car lots are practically empty at this point. Yeah. And so when you're a mobile business uh, and dealing with all the, and talking with all the other franchisors, we're all in it together. Like where do we get our supply chain from? And so, you know, for us, unfortunately, we're in the same type of uh, vehicle that Amazon and everyone else is using. So they got a little bit more priority over a uh, little old free us. No, no big deal. You're just going up against one of the largest retailers in the world. Yeah. You know, when I call, I think Ford looks at me a little bit differently than when Amazon wants a couple thousand of them. <laughs> so did the, did the vans, now you have rolling billboards across the country. Does that help support other sales channels for Frios? Absolutely. Um, it's been amazing for us. We have some of them now that they don't even drive their own car to the grocery store. They're like, I'm driving the Frios van because obviously I got space in it, but I'm always bringing business cards because everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. What do you do? I do this. Perfect. Here's a business card. You land an event from it. And so we get pictures all the time of people seeing the Frios van going down the street because it just sticks out. Uh, and that's what we wanted it to do, to be, bring the happiness. Uh, and so, yeah, it's been a tremendous asset to us beyond just the work vehicle that it is and the asset that that is. But it's just that moving billboard is once it's on the road, people see it and they're like, what is this? I need to be a part of it. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there that either know a franchisee or maybe they are franchisees. Um, but a lot of people who start their businesses, they look at franchising as an option. They can scale their business that way. They don't have to invest a bunch of capital to build out their business and they can, they can grow faster. What advice would you give them as they're considering doing that and, and pursuing that path for growth? I love the franchising industry. I mean, it's crazy how we have all these calls with other franchises. And we always ask you, how did you stumble into franchising? It's always like no one like was strategically trying to go into franchising. Everyone kind of stumbled into it. Uh, and so there's so many fun stories in the franchising world. But I would tell everybody, there's so many opportunities out there. Um, to find that right franchise business for them. Uh, you know, I kind of live by the motto, you know, life isn't a dress rehearsal. We get one shot at this thing. So um, find what makes you happy and go do that. And there's tons of opportunities in the franchising space to say, hey, you get to be an entrepreneur and run your own business, but at the same time, you're not reinventing the wheel and having to figure out your own problems. That's the role of the franchisor is like, hey, we've dealt with a lot of problems already. We've already got the answers for that let us support you. So as if you're becoming an entrepreneur, you're just going to start up your own little brick and mortar, whatever it is, your own business, you got to figure it out. There's no support group or anything. you got to do it yourself. But in the franchising world, there's tons of support and it's all geared towards your success. And so that's what I say for people is like the franchising industry is a strong industry, lots of support to set you up for success. So do you have any, any new flavors coming out for Frios that we need to know about? Yeah, you know, a tough day at uh, my job is when the production team comes in here with, you know, five or six flavors to try. And uh, so we've got a lot of new flavors that we're toying with right now, especially as we come into the new season. We just rolled out margarita. We just rolled out pina colada. Uh, we got a couple other flavors that we're getting ready for this spring. But we've got some really cool innovation in our pipeline that could transform us and what we're doing and who we sell to. So Super excited about that opportunity. So we'll see how that rolls out in the next uh, six months, hopefully. Awesome. Well, Cliff, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to record this podcast today. Where can people go to learn more about Frios and potentially become a franchisee? Yeah, a lot of the information is either at friospops.com or, you know, if they want to find some place and, and become a franchisee themselves, if they go to Frios Franchise, that's more of the details around becoming a franchisee. Uh, like I said, we're, we're at 70 locations across the country and we're hoping to hit that hundred mark by the end of the year. Awesome. Well, Cliff, thanks again. And uh, I really appreciate you sharing your story. Thanks so much, Jared. I'm sure I'll see you on the road soon, pal.